reason why the Jones Act is safe and secure is that we take nothing for granted. We operate under a modified version of Thomas Jefferson's adage. About an early 20th century law that some experts say is keeping a lot of help from the Gulf region. Millions of gallons of oil needing to be cleaned up and with more being added to the mix every day, oil skimming boats are one of the top priorities. Not one skimmer in sight, not one. It is radio silence, Brian. That's the frustrating thing. The problem is they are not U.S. owned and operated boats and therefore are barred from working in U.S. coastal waters by a 1920s law known as the Jones Act. If there is the need for uh, any type of waiver, that uh, that would obviously be granted. We have not received a request from the Coast Guard to waive the Jones Act that I'm aware of. The Jones Act is not responsible for the cost of gasoline, the price of groceries in Hawaii, the debt in Puerto Rico, or snowy roads in New Jersey. tired ships that need to be uh, refleeted, uh, probably a cost of something excess of $500 million. Ask that we be allowed to spend down more money uh, from the trust fund. shakeup in Hawaii shipping industry. Horizon is out and its two largest competitors are taking over. Horizon Lines is described as the only ocean cargo carrier serving Alaska, Hawaii and Puerto Rico from the mainland. But they're out of the picture now that it sold its Hawaii operation to the Pesha Group, a California-based transportation company. Which is the third player in the Hawaii market. Sumner LaCroix studies the current state of economies in the Asia-Pacific region. He is skeptical of this multi-million dollar merger. So as a result of the merger, uh, the Hawaii market is essentially reduced from three players to uh, two players. Uh, that's always something of some concern when you have a small number of firms. Trucking assets of Logics, coupled with uh, an outsourced uh, third-party terminal in, in Los Angeles, our own vessels, and then a dedicated terminal in Hawaii. Jones Act is an archaic 1920s era law that hinders free trade, stifles the economy, and hurts consumers, largely for the benefit of labor unions. Has the U.S. ensured the shipbuilding capacity necessary to maintain the merchant marine? Again, the answer is no. The most glaring evidence is the number of U.S. shipyards with the capacity to build commercial ships a thousand gross tons or larger. It has decreased drastically over the past few decades to only three. 
and again the fact that the armed forces buy foreign-built vessels to complete their fleet illustrates how the artificial ship shortage caused by the Jones Act is circumvented in effort to support the security of the nation. In fact, in examining the effects of the shipping law in 2012, the World Economic Forum pointed out regulations like the U.S. build provision in the Jones Act damages local economies and saddles businesses and subsequently consumers with significant costs. When others are leaving Puerto Rico, American maritime companies are doubling down on the island's future by investing nearly $1 billion in state-of-the-art vessels and infrastructure and creating thousands of private sector jobs in Puerto Rico. Economists have projected that from 1920 through the present, the Jones Act has cost Puerto Rico $75.8 billion, an amount higher than its public debt. Consider the, um, the words of the economist Henry George, who said, protectionism in all of its forms does to your own people in peacetime what the enemy would do to you in wartime. And consider, what, what would an enemy want to do to the people of Hawaii during wartime? They would want to cut us off from international shipping. That's what the effect of a, of a, of a hurricane would be, too, to cut us off from international shipping. Well, this is what the law does to us all the time, not just during, in a moment of emergency. The Jones Act is not going away. The American Maritime Partnership and other leaders of our domestic trade um, are, are very strong in this regard. The Jones Act does not apply to foreign-owned vessels installing wind turbines off the coast of Delaware, so they can make exceptions. 